We've reached a significant milestone. This is episode 100 of this particular playlist. So if you're new to the channel, then first of all, welcome. But also you now have plenty of content to get into. We started to look last time at the advantages that adaptive indicators might have over standard indicators. And our focus was on the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average. The reason for this is that this uses the efficiency ratio to adjust its parameters to negate the effects of noise on trend following systems. Today, we look at how the calculation works, which is important to understand if you're considering the use of this indicator. Back right after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. The Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average uses an ingenious technique in order to speed up or slow down the moving average line based on what's required to avoid the effects of noise. Let's take a look. Last time we considered the benefits of using adaptive indicators and in particular ones that adapt their trend parameter based on market noise. And the indicator that we focused on was the Karma or Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average. This time I look in a lot more detail at the calculation that sits behind this indicator and the reasons why it operates as it does. Now the Karma was specifically designed to select the best trend speed for the existing market conditions in terms of the amount of noise. And even when we just look at this indicator visually on a chart, we can see that occurring. So you'll notice here that rather than being smooth like a standard moving average would look, we rather see this stepped nature in the movement. And this is because the moving average speed is intentionally increased when the market is moving efficiently in a particular direction. And then the speed of the trend is slowed right down when there isn't any efficiency. So in other words, when the market is noisy. And sometimes under these conditions, the line even looks flat. So let's just focus in on a few areas of this chart. So if we start here, we can see that the price is moving fairly efficiently in an upwards direction. And because of that, the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average is chasing price rapidly because it's using a small number of periods, which makes it move fastly. And we can see similar all the way through this particular price action. However, look at this area. Here, price isn't really going anywhere. However, there is a relatively large amount of noise in the price action, with the price going up and down continually. And during this period of time, as you can see, the Kaufman Adaptive Moving Average is fairly flat. And again, we can see this similar behavior here, here, and so on. So what we need to do next is have a look how the calculation enables this. And the whole basis is on what's called a smoothing constant. And it's this smoothing constant that enables the speed of the trend to vary. This is what the equation looks like. And this is where the smoothing constant fits into it. Now this is a little simpler than it looks. It just means that the current value for the karma uses the previous value and then it either subtracts or adds a value on, depending on whether the close price is higher or lower than that previous value. But the rate at which it does that is determined by the smoothing constant. So let's take a closer look at how this is calculated. 
Now the key thing here is that it's based on the efficiency ratio. And this of course is that measure of how efficient or noisy the markets currently are. And if you remember from previous episodes, this ranges between a value of zero and one, with one being the most efficient and zero being the most noisy. So in other words, the more efficient the market is, the higher the smoothing constant is. Now, don't get too hung up on the other part of this equation, because this is fairly static under normal circumstances and it just uses a fast period and a slow period. But usually these stay the same all of the time and these have been pretty much selected by Kaufman in order to give the correct range of moving average periods. And the recommended is usually to have two periods for the fast and 30 periods for the slow. And the more observant of you would have noticed that there was a square calculation in the previous screen. And the effect of this is that it squares those values between 30 and 2 to give us the moving average periods. And what this means is that at its absolute slowest, a 900 period moving average will be used. So it's effectively stationary or flat. It will hardly move each bar. But then at its fastest, when the efficiency ratio is high, we move right down to a four period moving average. So it's extremely fast and chases the price. Now those extreme values, of course, will be determined by what the value of the efficiency ratio is. So when the efficiency ratio is one, which is perfectly efficient, the moving average periods are four, and the calm moves very quickly. When the efficiency ratio is zero, 900 periods. And then for anywhere in between, there'll be this range between four and 900 periods. And it's that changing of the moving average periods that gives us this stepped nature to the moving average curve. So at this point, for example, it will be relatively close to the four period end of the spectrum. Whereas when it goes flat, this means it's closer to the 900 periods end of the spectrum. Now let's talk very briefly about what you should and shouldn't adjust in the karma indicator. Really, the only parameter that's worth adjusting is the number of periods that are used to calculate the efficiency ratio. And this, of course, is what that smoothing constant is based on. So a small number of periods here means it's very reactive to the noise conditions right now, whereas a higher number of periods means it's looking over a larger number of bars in order to perform that noise calculation. What I wouldn't recommend is that you start to optimize or change the periods used for the fast and the slow boundaries. Values of two and 30 seem to work fairly acceptably, but what Kaufman does suggest is that you might, if anything, want to try three and 30. It isn't worth changing the 30 value at all because 900 periods is certainly slow enough. But if you change this first value from two to three, it reduces the speed at the fast end. And here it can have a minimum of nine periods, which of course is three squared. Now, I'm sure that many of you might choose to download Karma indicators from the web. And what you might notice when you look at the code is that you will see these hard coded values in there, as opposed to the calculation I showed you earlier. But the only reason they do this is in order to make the indicator more performant, because there's no point in doing that calculation again and again and again. So they've just done it once and then used those values. So if you see these specific values, 0 0.60 and 0 0.065, then these relate to those values of two and 30 which therefore give you that range in moving average speeds between four and 900. If, however, you see these values, with the first one being 0.435, that means that the values of three and 30 have been used, giving you that range of speeds of the moving average that are used 
between 9 and 900. Now, before you do download any, one thing I need to make you aware of is that after the next episode, which will be the end of this noise series, I'll be putting together a noise indicator package, which will be completely free for you to download. And this will include my version of the Karma indicator, which actually allows you to choose the parameters you want to use for the fast end. So you can choose whether you want to use two or three and you can try each of those out and back test them if you like. Well, this will just be one indicator as part of that package. And also included in that will be price density, which we've covered previously in episodes, and also the efficiency ratio itself. So what's the next episode all about? Well, I'll be showing you how Kaufman recommends you use this indicator in a trading context. And of course, I'll also be providing you with the details to enable you to download and use that noise indicator package. Now, if you'd like to find out more about Darwin X and the services that we provide to traders just like you, you can click on the link at the bottom here right now. Also, if the next episode's already available, you'll see that just above it. But now until next time, trade safe.